It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got the two teams who met in Super Bowl 47. It's the Ravens and the Niners on Thursday night. We are about 40 miles or so south of Candlestick Point at a place that first opened back in 2014. As you get a look at Levi's Stadium here in Santa Clara, California. And tonight on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Up in the booth with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and kickoff straight ahead, CD. What's one thing that you're going to have your eye on? I think about what the great coaches of the past always said, the key to any ball game. Can you rush theirs and protect yours? Well, in this case, both of these teams get after the quarterbacks. I'm watching the pass rush. It's a rematch of Super Bowl 47 minus one Harbaugh. The Ravens and 49ers are underway. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line. So the same result had he opted for the touchback. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they will be led out by their signal caller in his second year in the NFL now. And you'd think as a young QB, there'd be some nerves leading an offense out to start a game, but haven't seen any sign of them right now. And speaking with him earlier this week, sense that the pressure wouldn't get to him. He feels comfortable being the face of this offense and shouldering the expectations on game day, even if he doesn't quite have the years of experience other quarterbacks do. Here's Samuel. And that is the kind of tackling they want to see all game as he'll lose yardage to start things out. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. This is Samuel. Five yards, now it's third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Purdy. That is caught. And he is going to have a Niners first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. Well, they kept it simple there, CD, only needing the short gain to move the chain. So they didn't want to go with a deep throw. They just go with that safer, shorter throw and able to convert. Nothing wrong with that at all, partner. Check the box, right? Make sure you pick up the first down. Offense is getting established. You're moving the ball. You're not turning it over. Check, check, check. They like what they're doing early in the game. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. And McCaffrey going to pick up a Niners first down as he'll be brought down just shy of midfield. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Trenton Simpson, well, he just flew in there to drop him. Now, how about that? 
Defensive coordinator perfectly in sync, dials up a blitz. And the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike. Big Mike. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Purdy. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Well, partner, guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. They do get 18, but even that won't be quite enough. It's fourth down. And now a decision here on the opening drive. Fourth and very short this part of the field. What do you think they do, CD? I think you go for it. I think there's a lot of game left to be played. I like the advantage that they're trying to create here early. I say be aggressive and try and get it done. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. A number eight, Lamar Jackson trotting onto the field at quarterback, ready to lead this Ravens offense. Early part of his career, defenses really had to focus on his running ability, and they still do. But now he's turned himself into a true dual threat quarterback. When he plants his cleats in the ground and turns it loose, good things happen downfield. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at the 20. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. Now able to break through that initial contact and winds up getting about three there. It's second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Second down, they go again with Henry. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Now they need two. Here's third down. Here's Jackson to throw. A short throw caught by Andrews. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. That's complete. It's Rashad Bateman. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10, right at the 40. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Then their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Second and 10. Inside handoff, Henry. And he's going to have this pretty close to a first down as the tackle is made at the Niners 32. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, 
makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. On third and short, they'll try option left. The quick feet by Jackson. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 14 yards that time and a first down on the keeper. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play call it a gain of six on the play and that will bring up second down Jackson options out left and they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone it's a 10-yard gain there to set him up first and goal. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Patrick Ricard. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Ravens will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays, and it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. They start on the ground with McCaffrey. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Purdy now to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. Well, a nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Got a man right side. It's McCaffrey. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Up the gut, McCaffrey. 
And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Now Samuel. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. And that's some good tackling there to keep him short of that yellow line. Yeah, defensively, all I'm thinking is that on that play, get me to third down. Get me into a position where I can make one more play and get my defense off the field. Here now, third and a yard. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. What a determined run there as he's going to take this all the way down near the 40. Oh, boy, Christian McCaffrey shaken up, so hold everything here as they're going to take a look at it. The medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Now former six-round pick, it's Elijah Mitchell. And he is going to wind up losing yardage here as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven-nothing on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. As they've got it as we resume action. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. The good signal callers would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Purdy with it on third and long. Pressure too much. Down he goes. Michael Pierce in all of his 340-pound glory gets the sack. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7-0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7-0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. That'd be ideal. Jackson on first down. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Javon Hargrave, the D-tackle, getting the sack. Okay, was it a breakdown in protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big-time sack. So after the sack here, second and 14. Jackson. The looking deep here for Flowers. And it's knocked away and incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Draw play. This is Henry. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Nine yards on the carry there, but it'll be fourth down now. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt.
take it in at the 22. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all. And let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice. So they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. Connects with Kittle underneath. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that's going to bring up second down. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved, but when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. Purdy now to throw off the play action. He'll fire this deep for Ayuk. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Offense is all over, continue to be aggressive, and most people never turn down a shot at a deep ball, but oftentimes it attracts a little bit of extra attention, and it did on that play, and that one got knocked away. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and seven. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Purdy will look to throw again here. Back to Debo Samuel for consecutive catches. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A really good pickup of 28 yards. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. A throwing here, Purdy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Now a second and 10. Here's Purdy. Touchdown, 49ers! Brandon Ayuk from 21 yards away. And the Niners are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. Moody good with the extra point, and we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Ravens taking the field. 
And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 26. He'll start with a give to Henry. And not a whole lot there. Maybe a yard to the 27. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Play action. Now Jackson. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Javon Hargrave. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. What a nice read and play by the defensive tackle. Never bought the play action fake. Went right for the quarterback and put him on the ground. Now after that sack, it's third and long for Jackson and the Ravens. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Henry up the middle. And he's got this one across midfield into 49er territory. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. Henry again on second down. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. Five yards on first down, but now just a one-yard pickup there on second. Jackson. Oh, he had he was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game. So you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Here's Jordan Stout now. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. Spotted at the 14-yard line. Well, the 49ers settling in for their next drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. Purdy now on second down. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 19 yards the pick up there. Move the chains. Charles, to move the chains that time, they had to complete it in a double coverage, and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one-on-two matchup. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to throw, Purdy. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. 
And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. He was unable to shake free there, and they'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. That to the right sideline, and it falls incomplete. He had no options downfield there and just chucked it out of bounds. There was no one open. He was in the pocket. Where was the intentional grounding call? Oh, you wanted the flag. Of course I did. I'm a defensive guy. You know that. Where was the flag? The officials point out that someone was in the area. He got away with one. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 41-yard line. Great way to convert on third down there, 21 yards the play. With the kind of game he's had so far, you had to know that on third down that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Here's second and ten. Now a draw play to McCaffrey. Five yards, now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Purdy will set up to throw it here. I uh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. And no move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. Now Purdy. He's got his target. That's complete. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. So after the conversion on fourth, here's first and ten just outside of the red zone. Purdy. That's to McCaffrey, complete. And he's out of bounds, almost gets to the 10. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Once you get into the red zone, space is at a premium for receivers to try and operate and shake themselves free. That one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. Purdy sets up to throw again. A quick throw there is incomplete. Fine work by the Baltimore defense to help bring up fourth down. Back-to-back -back incompletions of what was once a nice drive. Stalled out here. I'm going to give credit to the secondary partner. Never gave up as they gave up a few yards, and they came through on that play to deny that pass and force the fourth down. Here we go with McCaffrey. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10.
Purdy now to throw. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. I think the defense surprised him there with that blitz on first down, but give him credit. Stayed cool under pressure and still found a way through the extra rushers for positive yardage. Well done. Here's second and goal operating from the eight-yard line. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. A second down throw for Purdy. Flushed out right. Oh, he's going to be brought down there in the field of play. And the clock will run. No timeouts. They will not have the chance to bring out the field goal unit. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have the show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we send you cross country we to thought Orlando, this one would be Jonathan a close Coachman battle coming here, and, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. All right, Coach. Thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. And this will not be returned, so the second half begins with a touchback. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Second half begins with a run by Henry. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. The defense thought they had that play covered, but it still got driven backward by those blockers. Those types of plays are a key part of any team's offensive game plan. It all starts up front in the trenches. Second and six, just inside the 30. Off the option, here's Henry. He works his way forward for a couple up past the 30. Here is third down and four. Now it's Jackson. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The end result, 21 yards. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. Broke through some contact, but unable to reach the 40. 44 yards rushing for him now to this point. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Again, it's Henry. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Four yards to pick up, first down. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision 
and good footwork and add in a little bit of power and you find a way to pick up first downs. Line of scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. A shotgun handoff to Henry and he'll take this down to the 33. On any running play that's called they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again continue to move the ball on the ground or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And now Jackson will look to throw it completes it to Aguilar. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. So five yards here, five on the play. And now one yard to go on third down. In motion left goes a tight end. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. Yeah, brought down, but not before he was able to break the tackle and the extra effort moves the sticks. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Here's Jackson. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And this is incomplete. Oh, that looked like a sure six points. But he could not get that to stick. And that is a golden opportunity wasted there. And this was a little bit of the knock on him coming out of college. Sometimes the concentration could wander a bit. This should have been a big play. But somehow he's not able to corral it. Tucker's kick is good and they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. Well, they don't get a touchdown here on the opening drive of the third quarter but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No absolutely you keep the pressure on right you go downfield get some points up on the board and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago. And I think even though they trail in the game now, I would consider that a win for their defense, and that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench. Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Now he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Now that's a run that warms a play caller's heart because you're actually set up to do whatever you want on offense. You can come right back and run essentially the same play because you have momentum. Or you can fake that running play and throw something deep over the top. Or you now feel like you have an extra down to play with because if you go ahead and just throw it and you don't get it, come back and try and pick it up on third down. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Purdy looking to throw. Open man is Samuel. Complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. to throw Purdy now a quick throw there but it's going to be incomplete 
Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. One first down here, and that's all, folks. Good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he's on to kick it away. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. To throw is Jackson. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And they'll have a short field to work with inside the 15 at the 13-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does. And I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within this, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Following the fumble recovery, Purdy. And it's complete in the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. Juwan Jennings from 13 yards out. And the Niners have taken the lead here in this third quarter. But well, what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in a situation before where a turnover occurs, and if you're over on the bench with your defensive mate and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this one PG. FCC violation. No doubt. Moody good with the extra point. And the lead is now 14 to 10. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. Charles, you got to think the number one goal here is ball security. Remember last drive, they coughed it up. Then they allowed the touchdown, and now they're trailing on the scoreboard. Boy, the way you described it makes me think that that one actually hurt them three times. The fumble cost them potential points. Then they watched their opponent get a touchdown off of the fumble. And third, they lost the lead as a result. Really tough sequence right there. I don't think coaches have to remind them to hold on to the football. They've just got to find a way to get it done. 
two yards the gain on the keeper and it's second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. Play action. Now Jackson. That one into the hands of Flowers. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. It's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down. A first down carry for Henry. And he's got this one across midfield into 49er territory. 60 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? On second down, here's Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. And Andrews going to have a Ravens first down as he'll get this down to the 41. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere. In the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Oh, that one well designed as he'll take this down to the 30-yard line. The decision to keep it turns out to be a good one. 11 yards in the first down. It looked like almost a miscommunication defensively because once he decided to keep it, he had pretty smooth sailing. Yeah, it became a question of, wait a minute, who's got the quarterback? And when you talk about miscommunication, it's supposed to be called assignment football on the defensive side of the ball. But the assignment... Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Fred Warner. And the 49ers are going to have it here just past the 25. And that could turn out to be a giant play, Charles. You've got an offense driving to take the lead, but they're turned away on the INT. And I think that we might look back on this in the fourth quarter and say, that was the play of the game. As San Francisco's offense returns to the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their own 26. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Got a man. That's Ayuk. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Final minute now of the third quarter. So it looks like somebody may have forgotten the snap count, and a five-yard penalty ensues. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he'll take this to the 32, a gain of about three. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Here's Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a 49ers first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. 
It's 49er football here. They've got the lead as well as we get set to start the fourth and final quarter. Here's Purdy on first and 10. Slant route connects with Debo Samuel. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 13 yards there and a Niner first. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. And these guys, sir, they're not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. So from the 36 now, first and 10. McCaffrey running up the middle. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Purdy now on second down. This will be caught at Samuel. Touchdown! Debo Samuel, 35 yards. And the 49ers will add to their fourth quarter lead. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over. And here a late turnover leads to a fourth quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here, and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Moody good with the extra point. And that makes one to ten game. So this drive spans seven plays. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And yeah, the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start by running the option to the right. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Typically on the read option play, when we talk about responsibilities, we're talking about what the quarterback has to go through. How about the inside linebacker, though? His job on this play, shadow the quarterback and hold him to a short gain. Did it to perfection. From the gun, Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. And Andrews going to have a Ravens first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 37. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. On second down, here's Henry. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 
73 yards on the ground now for Henry. He's got a first down. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. On second down, Jackson. And this throw incomplete. Now the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Oh, nice defensive effort there, providing the hit as the ball got to the receiver, separates him from the catch, and normally he's a sure-handed target. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit four of seven. This time they face a third and two. Throwing is Jackson. And yeah, this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Debo Samuel trotting out with his offense to start this next drive. They have to like what they've gotten from him in this game. Think about the accumulation of catches. Eight. The yards per catch now, because you're getting more than a first down every time he's touching the ball. This is the kind of game you want when you're able to throw it out wide. Absolutely. Over 100 yards, has the eight catches. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll set up to throw from the gun. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? On second down, McCaffrey. Oh, a heck of a move. Man. And he's going to have a Niners first down as he's able to get this up past the 40. I know we're in the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space. But there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle. And, you know, late in this game, he wants a football in his hands. He's had a good day. Play action. Now Purdy. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. From the shotgun to McCaffrey, and he'll get it down to the 47 here. 70 yards now for McCaffrey. It's a first down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And that's good for a gain of six, and that'll make it second down. Defense, 
Out of the gun, Purdy. Completes it to the tight end, Kittle. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as he'll get this down to the 32. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. It'll be a minimum pickup, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. Again, McCaffrey. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Back to throw, Purdy. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So here we go. It's Jake Moody now in a big spot. This to perhaps salt this one away. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that one, CD, going to make the road back a lot more difficult. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know they were praying on the other sideline for a miss because now, as you pointed out, a very difficult road. Down two scores. You don't just need a touchdown. You need a chain of events to go your way. You've got to score, somehow get the ball back, and score again. The odds of that happening, not great in your favor. So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by 11, a minute 45 to play. They need a touchdown with a two-point conversion and a field goal in either order as they've got it first down. Jackson. That is caught. Bateman. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. They need a touchdown, the two-point conversion, and a field goal. Pretty good start to the drive, though. Yeah, good start to the drive, but the urgency has to really be increased by both the players on the field and everyone on the sidelines. Got to make sure everyone is up and into this game. Throwing. Jackson. Throw caught by Flowers. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Well, they obviously red man coverage their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro yeah, bro he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Now Jackson. That's caught. It's Flowers. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Of course, remember, you need a touchdown here and a field goal. Doesn't matter the order, but they have to get it done and get it done fast. 
Well, they need to score and score quick. One timeout remaining. Final minute, first and 10. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Flowers. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. They'll come up first and 10 here. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Here's Jackson. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. Again from the 15, second and 10. Someone moved, flag is out, that's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. That flag accepted, and it backs the offense up a little bit. Here's second down. Jackson to throw. And it's caught. He's got it for a late touchdown, but probably a little too late. It would take a miracle of epic proportions if they're going to pull this one off. Problem for them, they needed that score with a little more time left on the clock. I think just too little too late now. I would agree with that, and we're programmed never to say never. But in this case, we're asking a lot for them to even think they have a chance. So this likely just to get the final score a bit closer given the time remaining, but they'll have a go for two here. They'll try and run it in with Henry, but he will not get in here. He stopped up short of the goal line, and this will remain a five-point game. Defensively, certainly not fooled there. Play started at the two, and he was tackled at the two. That has to feel good for them. Not happy about having given up the touchdown, but stopping the two-point conversion gives them a little bit of a lift as they head to the bench. So with a second to play, they essentially need a recovery and a run back. And it's the 49ers who recover it, and that ought to just about do it. Well, this was a good one. Excitement all the way to the end. You had the points, and then they were hoping for the miracle there on the onside kick. Couldn't get it recovered, and that was your ball game. And I'm of the opinion that any time you actually do recover an onside kick, it almost is a miracle. It takes so many things going right to make it happen. It didn't in this case, and they walk off a victor. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gold.